Gaffer, many congratulations. Nine years at the club. Thank in you. the modern world, that's some achievement. It is, yeah, it is in the world that I live in, in football management. Um, a lot of work by many people, not just me. You know, people talk about my time here, but there's been so many good things done by so many good people here. Um, and I must mention, you know, it's been a really positive time for the club. It's been a positive time for me. Totally positive time, you know, and the, the acceptance of myself. Tricky first era, first part of the, the era, if you like. Um, my part of it, sorry, as manager. Um, but once, once we kind of broke that, kind of mould of, of what I was, what I was about, and I think people started to accept me, and we had a fantastic season with you all know and got promoted that first season. And then belief builds, and, and I've had a really good rapport, really good relationship with, with not just the people who work here, but the fans as well, and I think that's been an important part of our many successes, and we want that to continue, quite obviously. You mentioned 2012, 2013. I was looking back, at the end of that season, you had 11 wins, 11 draws, 11 defeats. Mm -hmm. It was a tricky tricky time for you it was and you know people didn't really take to what I was trying to do what I was trying to achieve um, there was a little bit of that weird feeling then I think the the, the outside world well the, the Burnley world if you like thought the team was maybe in a better place than it was there was a lot of contract issues or I had to cut a lot of money off the wage bill and the likes which we did that summer of course with the I, I always reference this I did the other week actually I, I think my turning point well, another turning point I think the feel of a manager with fans when Charlie Austin got sold two days before the season, I just had this sense that the fans went, whoa, hang on a minute. Like, this, that's tough. You know, that's a tough thing to swallow. Because the word was going around, we'd had a really, really strong pre-season. I know you'd have probably seen some of the pre-season. We went up to Carlisle, we were excellent. Went to Tranmere, we only won 1-0, but we were excellent. The whole feel of that pre-season, it was a really good atmosphere. Some key players at that time, not the obvious, not Ings in trips then, but Dean Marnie, the way he was going about Jason Shackle, Duffo, of course, forever going. And Tom Heaton came in, you know, Jonah came in, and Scotty Arfield, effervescent Scotty Arfield. And there was good noise around at that time, just through pre season. And then, of course, Charlie got sold. And I just had this feeling the fans went, oh, hang on a minute, they, they, need, they need back in here. And the fans were brilliant and we started playing well and we started winning and the whole thing just grew and it's never really looked back i must say we've had a few question marks of course now as well but generally the fans have been absolutely excellent and they've been fair to me and, and i just hope that continues by us turning these performances into wins from uh, you talk about your best signings whilst you've been with the club there were three free transfer signings that summer of 2013. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned difficult. Tom Eaton, Scott Arfield, yep. David Jones. It's difficult to see beyond them. Um, out of respect for them as professionals, um, we've had many good ones. But I mean, you, you, can't, you, know, you can't compute losing the players, but particularly Charlie, who, uh, Charlie had become a bit of a sort of a, um, you know, big figure here, and like a talisman really, I suppose, for scoring, of course. And you look back then and you're bringing in them and I think people are going, well, I got a lot of stick for bringing Tom Eaton in, but I'm a first ever sign and I got a real lot of stick for that. Um, I'm pleased that one worked out. But Scotty, you know, and, and what he achieved, Dave Jones, who people thought were maybe just over it. <sighs> fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Fantastic pros, uh, pros as well, and all for zero. And then, once I inherited trips, I'm not allowed to do favourites, you know, but I'm trips, Ingsy, you know, but some of the unsung heroes that team, well, Scotty was one, Dave Jones people had, but also Dean Marnie was fantastic, Ross Wallace in patches, you know, Keith Tracy, people forget for all of his noise around him, he, he got a number of games in for us that year, scored a couple of important goals, you know, trips, of course, but uh, Shaq's, you know, there's so many good performers that season, and that really encapsulated, or started to encapsulate what we've been about ever since. You know, still trying to find that mixed football, if you remember, still some quality, but still sweat on the shirt. And that's the biggest thing I said. I said, I don't guarantee anything, but there will be sweat on the shirt. There will be people who care about what we do, and we still do now. I suppose the 2015-16 promotion was a little different because Burnley were fancied to yeah. do well that season. Yeah, I described that one. The, the first one was magical, and, and it will live with me forever. Um, the second one was business-like. Very, f We had a more formed team, a more formed way of playing. Um, we had a, a, th a thinking behind what we were doing, a real strong structure behind what we were doing. It was a different kind of team. We weren't as loose as when we had Ingsy, we were a bit looser, a bit more fluid at times. But that team was very business like, but very workman like, but with some real quality. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can't underestimate the quality, the, the number of goals we scored, um, the number of, or the, the, the low amount of losses we had. A very, very similar outcome to the, the previous season, apart we won it, of course. Um, so yeah, different feel, but still a fantastic achievement. You know, we were, 
If you remember, and you will, because I know you cover us a lot, around Christmas, just a little bit of discontent. So I think we're around six. Yeah, 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 and a few noises. Yeah, that's right, all city, yeah. Um, maybe it's three, I think. Yeah. And a bit of noise then, it was like, oh, hang on a minute, you know, and, and we're all sort of, mm, you know, and then we came out from then on, and 23, 23 undefeated, of course. Yeah, and part of that was George Boyd, George Boyd who's announced his retirement today. Yes, fantastic. Uh, good job you mentioned him. Fantastic professional. Um, the biggest signing at that time. Uh, we didn't put a lot of money out there, but he was a good signing for us. Worked. I mean, worked. Whew, that, that boy could work. He could run that boy, that's for sure. He certainly didn't lack effort for what the cause was. Um, no, he, he had a really good time here and we enjoyed having him here. Another, one of many, many players that we've had who's done well. Uh, you're quick to praise your staff um, who, who've played a big part. How's Tony Lachlan doing? Yeah, good. He's um, he's recovering well from his hip. It just got too much for him. He, the hours in the car, the hours on the training field, he needed it doing and he made that clear. Uh, but yeah, he, he'd been a really important part. Ian Wone, of course, who's, who's still here. Steve Stone stepped up now, but been with us for a number of years. Michael Duff was crossing over with the 20s, uh, 23s into the sort of development side into the first team as well. He came and sort of worked with us closely. But so many staff here, you know, still here. Um, Mark Howard was my first sort of staff signing, if, if you you know want to put it that way. But but I've inherited good staff, Ali BT, the Doc, and you know, there's so many good staff here. And like I say, I think it's important we reflect at times like this. It's not just like I take the heat and I take the good stuff. But there's so many good people here work so hard, and not just on the pitch. You know that the community department that Neil Hart put together. The chief execs of words, Lee Hu's very good to work with, Dave Bowen, very good to work with. Um, you know, these are good people around the club as well. So lots of, lots of good things around the club, not just on the pitch. Beyond no illusions, there's ups and downs Absolutely. in football. And I guess right here, right now, a little bit of a tricky spell. It is. It's a challenge. There's no two ways about it. I think we've shown before that we're up for the challenge. I think that's been quite apparent. I think it still is, the way the players are go about it, uh, going about it, and myself and the the attitude, the positive attitude towards these challenges. Um, they do come our way. Um, we've got a lot of work to do, but we have been down this road before, whether it's during the season when we've had tough spells or the beginning of the season, last season, beginning of the season, Europa season, don't forget. You know, tough seasons then, you know. And But we've got to find our way. Don't get me wrong, we've got to find our way. I can use all the positive words I want, all the positive feel, which is there and, and it's truthful, but we've got to find our way. We've got to win games. Looking at Brentford on Saturday, good to see Ben Mee playing 90 minutes against Spurs. Yeah, um, important figure that he has been, important figure he'll continue to be. Um, came in, slotted in nicely, I did the magic, as you'd imagine, sorry. And yeah, again, a frustrating one. I thought it was a good performance. Um, we put a mixed side out, but it still looked like a side. It looked, there was a good cohesion about it. There was a good defensive responsibility. A lot of good things to performance. I really liked the attitude late on, and the crowd were fantastic, I must say that. The, the attitude towards going to try and win it, and or going to try and get a, a, something from it. Um, was was really quite obvious, I thought, and the crowd went with that. And that's all we can ask, you know, the crowd to stick with us along this journey and along these challenges, stick with us, see the players working and play their part as best they can in us turning the corner. Some good memories uh, against Brentford. You talked about 2015-16 uh, yeah. season. We won 3-1 there at Griffin Park. Oh, the first that's half. <laughs> yeah, the three goals were just yeah, so special. First half, you know, there, there's... I remember first half against Nottingham Forest at home, um, the first promotion. I remember the first half there. I mean, some phew, that was a that was a, a fantastic uh, performance. That particularly first half. Second half they played well, but first half we were fantastic that night, and it could have been more if you remember. Yeah. Um, that was one of the turning points there, you know. You know, on that season, well, it was when everyone sort of went, "Hang on, we're we're back on it here. We're you know we're really rolling," and uh, yeah, good feel about it. Yeah, um, the fans were excellent. On Wednesday night, you mentioned them. Mm -hmm. You'd want to win at Turf more for them. Oh, fantastic! Look, they've they stand by us. They continue to do so. You know, you, you can't do everything for fans, but but they play their part here. We recognise that. The group recognise it. I recognise it. So we'll certainly be working hard for them as well. You know, you have to do it for the team yourselves as part of the group, and the fans come with you. But sometimes you pay it back and I think they're deserving at the moment because they stood by us last season through a tough season, um, different kind of tough season. I think they're aware the team's remolding a little bit, you know, Maxwell coming in and these kind of, and they've got behind Nathan Collins and last night Connor, you know, um, so that's been good, the open-mindedness to them players coming in, I think that's important. And now getting their rewards from, you know, they can they continue to back us, they continue to support, to support us. I think most know we're not far away because they know us as well, you know, most, a lot of Burnley fans have watched us a lot. I think a few of them feed back to me when I see and I go, you know, we're not far off, are we? And I said, no, you know, but it's, it's that hard message because some always go, oh, I keep saying that. You go, well, I'm not naive, you know, I know my job and that's to win. 
make it no mistake. I think the Burnley fans know that I know my job. Um, but I think we are close and we've got to just add them details to make sure we do it. Brentford are newcomers to the Premier League. They've taken one or two people by surprise. Yeah, and I think that can happen. I think um, that little open-mindedness that comes, that little underdog spirit that comes, we've had it ourselves, of course, maybe less so the last couple of seasons because people recognise a bit more, but you know, often written off and remarked upon, you don't do this, you don't do that. And there can be a bit of that. Um, they're, they're playing pretty effective football. You know, they work, they press. They keep going, you know, mentality towards the challenge in front of them. They've had a couple of losses, you know, so as you know, the Premier League's difficult. So it's more about awareness of them, and the players will be, but the awareness of us and what we're doing. And I always say that to the players, say, we have to let you know about the opposition, but our focus is still on us. Our focus is on what we're doing, how we're playing, adding the details to go and get what we want. Well done. Well done Thank in you. your nine years, Gaffer. Good luck for the future. Thank you.